a cricket match is in its final stage. It's make or break with 10 runs needed by Sam Moore's team to win. The crowd is going wild. The spectator is conducting the match enthusiastically, predicting Sam's team to win. Sam is a tall, 22-year-old Indian boy with locks that come down to his chin and a decent, good-looking beard. He is the batter and captain of his team. With only two balls to go and six runs needed to win, Sam gets ready for the next ball. The baller makes his move and Sam scores an amazing four. The crowd goes wild, and it is obvious now that Sam Moore's team will win. Little did he know there are people who don't want him to win. There is a rich man in a white suit, Savant, sitting on a stage witnessing the whole match. The team opposing Sam's is this man's team. When it looks like Sam's team is going to win, he looks at a man who looks like his personal assistant. He calls him Jerry and tells him to do something about it. Jerry looks at the umpire, who looks back. He gives the umpire a signal, and he nods. The final ball is ready to be thrown. Sam is ready at the stand for the ball to come. The umpire stops the baller and says something to him. The baller nods and throws the ball wrong. It is a white ball, meaning it shouldn't count as a ball. Instead of giving the signal for a white ball, the umpire stays silent and the conductor announces that the team opposing Sam's has won the match. The crowd cheers and the team celebrates. But it isn't over yet. Sam Moore moves towards the umpire who starts to recede with a terrified look on his face. Sam starts to beat him up, and when people try to separate them, Sam throws them off of him like they meant nothing. He beats the umpire with a bat, and when the bat breaks, he uses his bare hands. When the rich man, Savant, sees the way Sam beats up the umpire, he knows he can use Sam for his dirty work. He tells his assistant to let the boys' team win. It's a tactic to get him on his side. Sam wins and brings home the golden trophy, celebrating. When he is climbing up the stairs to his apartment, Sam bumps into a young, beautiful girl. This girl is Amy, the daughter of a rich man turned poor. She is a newcomer, and even though Sam thinks she's beautiful, he talks to her with spite and tells her to get out of his way. She smiles and obeys, while she goes downstairs to buy something for a neighbor. Sam goes home to his mother. He happily shows her the trophy, and his mother smiles but complains about him not getting a job, and letting his father do all the work. Sam tells her everyone has their own fate, and no one can do anything about that. Her mother curses his game that he's addicted to, and goes to do her chores. That night, when Sam is eating, he asks his mother for more eggs. At the same time, his father comes home in a fury. He yells at Sam for beating up the umpire, not getting a job and just being a disappointment to him. He beats him up with a shoe, and then with his hands. Sam's mother tries to stop him, but he keeps doing it until Sam can't take it anymore, and he raises a hand to his own father. His father tells him to get out and not come back. Sam storms out in a rage, and his father curses him for not having passed away at birth. Sam bumps into Amy again, as she is trying to bring her bicycle upstairs. He rudely tells her to keep it downstairs, there's already too little space to walk. He shoves the bicycle to the side and goes downstairs. Behind Amy, a girl appears and comforts her. She tells Amy that Sam is just like that and that she would get used to it soon enough. Amy becomes friends with her and the girl introduces herself as Swati. Amy goes home to her family. Her father is combing his hair in front of the mirror. He has a scar on his chest and it looks like he has had open heart surgery. Amy goes home and stops her little brother as he starts complaining about how small the house is. Amy's father acknowledges how small it is, and in his way, he apologizes for it. Amy's mother comforts him and Amy tells him they are very happy there. Amy leaves the room, but she can still hear how his father talks to his mother, about how Amy and her little brother will not be able to adjust to this lifestyle after coming from such a rich one. Amy cries, but hides it. She knows it's a hard time and she's worried for her family. Meanwhile, Sam goes to meet with Savant, who has summoned him to work for him. Sam and his entire gang of friends go and Savant tells Jerry to take care of the boys. They are taken to a club, where they drink and dance with girls. They have enormous fun and then Sam comes back home, drunk out of his mind. Just as he is about to go to his home, he sees Amy again, in her night clothes. She is sitting outside her house, reading. When she sees him, she immediately stands and turns around to go inside. He tells her to stop and she does, turning around to face him. He introduces himself as Sam Moore. She nods awkwardly and goes inside. The next morning, Sam's mother brings some cereal she made for Amy's family as a welcoming gift. Amy's mother thanks her and introduces Amy as her daughter. When Sam's mother leaves to find Sam, who has been sleeping on the roof of the building, one of Sam's friends, Babin, comes to Amy's door and tells her mother to tell him if they need anything. Feeling rather uncomfortable with the looks he gives Amy, her mother ushers her inside and gets rid of the boy politely before closing the door. When Sam and his friends hang out outside, Babin is busy making himself look good. The boys tease him to find out who he's getting ready for and he tells them he likes Amy. Sam looks at him with jealousy, but doesn't do anything as he's not sure about what he feels himself. For some reason, he just feels angry that the landlord let someone like Amy, with a rich name Tripati, rent his house. The landlord is confused by Sam's threats and when he tries to say something, Sam hangs up. Some rich people visit Amy's house in her absence. They are the Tripati's family friends. They have come to ask for Amy's hand in marriage. Her parents look a bit hesitant, because their status is not the same as before, and their friend's son, 
Derek has studied abroad. They are afraid they are not up to the standard. Derek's parents assure them that it does not matter and that they couldn't find a better girl than Amy. They tell them that they will talk to Derek and that the Tripodies should talk to Amy about this. Amy's marriage has been finalized. The next day, at a function, Sam and his friends are working for Savant and there is a problem out front. Sam shows up to find a car accident and a rich-looking boy arguing for the driver to pay him money for damaging his Mercedes. Sam tries to convince him, but when he doesn't listen, Sam threatens to beat him and his car up. The boy looks intimidated and immediately sits back into the car. This is when Sam notices Amy sitting in the car. The boy is Derek, and he criticizes Amy and her family for choosing to stay in such a place, when his father was giving them a better one. Amy tells him to stop arguing and drive, staring at Sam the entire time. The next day, Amy goes to the Moore's house to return their utensils. Sam's mother is pleased to see her and invites her in. Amy spots Sam sitting in front of the TV, eating breakfast. Amy has brought something her mother likes to cook for them. Sam's mother tells Sam to get something to drink, but Sam rudely denies and Amy says she'll leave. Sam's mother tells her to stay and insists that she eat something. Sam's mother asks that Amy tutor some kids as well as her daughter. In the meantime, Sam's father shows up and sits down with them. He asks the girl about her education, and she tells him she's doing her degree. Mr. Moore is impressed and taunts and criticizes Sam for not being educated and not having a job. Amy senses the atmosphere and leaves, and when she does, Sam leaves as well, talking back to his father for insulting him. On Sam's mother's suggestion, Amy starts the night school on the roof. But this is where Sam and his friends hang out. When they show up and discover this, they are upset. They are about to leave when Sam stops them, but Sam starts to argue with Amy and tells her to stop pretending like she's some goody two-shoes who can teach little kids. He keeps insulting her about not being Marathi, until she starts to talk back to him in perfect Marathi. Everyone is surprised and embarrassed, including Sam. His friends quickly leave after that, but Sam stays. Amy angrily tells Sam's sister to multiply some numbers and tell her the answer, until Sam gives her the precise answer. She asks Sam's sister to multiply even more complicated numbers, and Sam gives her the answer again. She checks the answers with a calculator, and they are right. She is impressed and she looks at him with admiration, and gives him a bit of a smile. Sam smiles back. In the next scene, we see a celebration of Ganpati, and with it as a background, we see Sam and Amy fall in love. They dance together, and in the ritual that they perform, they have undeniable chemistry between them. The next day, as Sam and his friends sit outside, Babin announces that he's going to propose to Amy with a card and a rose. Sam glares at him and just as he is about to go, he grabs Babin's arm and warns him that she's his. Babin argues that it isn't fair. Sam stands and tells him she gives him a look that makes him sure she likes him. Babin insults him by saying a girl can give even a stray dog a look, it doesn't mean she likes it. Sam slaps him and starts to beat him up, but his friends stop him and Babin gets away. One of Sam's friends asks him if it's true and he says yes, before going to Amy to confess to her. He separates her from Swati, who is with her all the time and tries to talk to her, but the words don't come out like they should. Amy ignores him and climbs onto the bus. Before Sam knows it, she's gone. They go out to celebrate the event even more, and in the truck they sit in, Amy falls asleep on Sam's shoulder, without knowing it was him. When she wakes up and realizes, she quickly lets go of his arm and gets off the truck to go home with her sister. Sam tells his friends that Savant is not paying them anything for their work. Frustrated, he confesses to his friends that he's fallen in love with Amy and he dreams of buying her an expensive necklace. His friend warns him that she's a rich bird and he shouldn't dream of winning her heart with expensive things, but with thoughtful gifts. The next day, Sam is ecstatic as he roams about the streets. A necklace falls off of a necklace seller's stall, and he tries to return it, but when he sees the letter written on it, enclosed in a heart, he knows who this one is for. He climbs onto Amy's bus and confesses his love to her, trying to give her the necklace as a gift. Instead of accepting his gift, she yells that he's harassing her and everyone on the bus beats Sam up and throws him off the bus. He gives Amy one last, sad look, disappointed that she would do such a thing and gets off the bus. When Amy gets home, Sam's mother comes over and asks her for the yogurt she had asked her to put in the fridge. Amy looks upset, and when she asks what happened, she just gives the necklace with the letter on it to Sam's mother, telling her it belonged to Sam. Sam's mother realizes her son fell in love and when he comes home, looking sad and beaten up, she tells him not to be like his father, who never gave her an ounce of love. She gives him the necklace and teases him that his heart has just started beating. She smiles a kind smile and tells him he should have bought a more expensive one. The next day, there is a function. Sam shows up, unprepared and his mother tells him off for not wearing nice clothes. When Sam sees Amy there with Derek, his blood boils and he tries to make a scene, but his mother stops him. Sam knows he can't do anything, so instead of trying, he goes onto the stage, takes the microphone from the singer and starts to sing. He sings a love song for Amy and when she realizes, she gets rid of Derek by going up to her balcony so she can enjoy the show. She watches Sam sing for her, fondly, but soon enough, Derek finds her and asks her why she didn't tell him about Sam teasing her on the bus. She says it's not 
not a problem, because Sam wasn't really teasing her, but he doesn't listen. He asks her why she wasn't upset with Sam when he did what he did, and why she was so upset with him when he tried to kiss her. He tries to kiss her then, but she denies him. He tells her they will get married, but she reminds him that they haven't gotten married yet. He tries to force himself upon her, but she says no. To Amy's relief, the door knocks and she runs to open it, finding Sam standing there with a furious look on his face. Sam has her necklace in his hand and he pretends he came to return it, when he knows very well what is going on. Amy takes the necklace from him before Derek comes to slam the door in his face. He tries to get closer to her before the door knocks again and Sam stands there, asking if he should put the necklace on for her. Derek closes the door again, grabbing a bat to hit him when Sam knocks again. At the third knock, he is ready to attack, but it's just Amy's parents. Derek quickly puts on his fake smile to please them and he looks disappointed that he couldn't do what he had wanted to do. On the way out, he kisses Amy on the cheek, with her clearly not wanting it, and Sam witnesses this with gritted teeth. Tears well in Amy's eyes as she stands there, frozen, unable to move. Sam climbs up the stairs and looks at her with anger and pity before leaving her alone. The next day, Derek comes to pick Amy up. It is raining, and Amy sees the dangerous men Derek has brought with him. She knows exactly why they're there. She tells Derek to stop it. Derek doesn't listen and tells her that it's necessary to teach Sam a lesson so he won't bother her again. Amy watches helplessly as the men go towards Sam. One of the men asks if he's going to bother Amy again, and Sam shakes his head. He comes back to Derek to tell him the boy's apologizing. Derek tells him to beat him up anyway and that it's just his cunningness. Sam yells at the men and insults him, taunting them, daring them to attack. Furious at Sam's insult, the men attack. They try to control Sam, they try to hit him and they try to catch him. But Sam is not one to go down easily. He fights and he runs like no one has ever seen. Jerry is there to witness it all, despite the fact that Savant had not been giving them money. He keeps an eye on them. Sam fights with his bare hands, and then uses a motorcycle silencer to beat them up. He doesn't let anyone go, and beats up every last one of them, before walking up to Derek's windshield and smashing the silencer into it. Derek is scared to death and scurries off like a rat, leaving Amy behind. Sam walks up to her and tells her that he spared Derek, but he wouldn't let her go. After Jerry witnesses Sam's strength, he invites him to a pub to offer him money to work for Savant again. Sam tells him he doesn't need the money anymore, and that he and his boys wouldn't do Savant's dirty work for him anymore. Jerry tries to convince him, but he leaves. He gets drunk and gets a taxi home, while sitting on the taxi's roof. The driver wakes him up after, when he reaches his home and he wakes up to find Amy sitting on her roof, looking at him and smiling. He tells the taxi driver she likes him and he'll marry her. The taxi driver asks if he can sing for her, and Sam tells him to sing. They start singing for Amy's entertainment, and she watches them and laughs before going inside. They stop singing when they realize she's gone inside and Sam pays him and sends the driver on his way. The next day, Amy and her mother meet Sam's mother and she tells her that Amy will be home alone for the first time. She asks Sam's mother to take care of her and she happily agrees, on the condition that Amy eat her food. That night, as Amy is alone, Sam shows up to give her food, only to discover she burned her own while cooking. When he makes fun of her, she tells him she's going out to eat with Derek. This affects Sam, and he starts to eat the food he brought for her to annoy her. While she's getting ready, he tells her she looks absolutely beautiful with open hair. She tells him Derek likes her hair in a ponytail, which makes Sam even more annoyed and he shoots some insults at Derek. The next day, Sam's friends tell him that Amy didn't go eating with Derek, but went to the Chinese place alone and ate tons of fried rice. Sam is blissful when he hears this news, and he takes his mother's food in a lunchbox to her at the spot where she is eating with her friends. He tells one of her friends to get out of his seat, and he does, looking absolutely terrified of Sam. Sam forces Amy to properly eat his mother's food, before telling her off for going to the Chinese place. When he is content that she's eating, Sam leaves her with her friends. Amy is preparing for her exams. Sam knows Amy is alone that night, so he goes over with a blanket in bed, and knocks on her door. Amy opens the door, and is amused when he tells her that his mother was asking to send his sister to sleep with her if she's feeling alone. Amy smiles and opens the door wider to show him his sister, already asleep on the couch. He smiles, caught red-handed, and asks if he should sleep there too, in case she's afraid, and she laughs but says no before closing the door. Amy knows she has fallen in love with Sam, and she sings out of happiness in her house, knowing Sam is right outside, sleeping next to her door to protect her from harm. She puts her pillow right next to his, and drags the quilt he has on, onto herself, before blissfully going to sleep. The next day, Sam is outside again, with his friends when his eyes meet Amy's. They look at each other for a fleeting moment, before Amy realizes she missed her bus. Seeing his chance to be chivalrous, he takes his motorcycle and asks her to sit. Amy sits, but she doesn't hold on to him. He puts her hand on his waist, telling her he drives fast and she laughs, but keeps her hands there. To Sam's friend's extreme shock, they drive off. He drops her off at the next bus station, saying he wants her to be the first achiever in her class and she agrees before the bus starts driving. 
As she's giving her exam, she can't stop smiling and she gives her exam with more enthusiasm than she had ever done before. Sam walks home with her after the exam and asks her how it went. They talk about how much he loves her and approve it. He tells her the exact number of steps she walks every day, and he gives her a complete analysis of her steps. She is surprised and he bets her that if she counts, she'll know he's right. He starts counting, and when she reaches her house, he asks her if he was right. She teases him by saying it was 742 steps instead of 740, and he is in shock so he asks her again, and she admits he was right. She goes into her kitchen, and through her kitchen window, she asks Sam out. His mind is blown, and he is the happiest person alive when she tells her that her parents won't be home until the next day. They go out that night and have a classic date, where he puts his arm around her shoulder and tries to hold her hand. She rejects his moves because she is old school, but it doesn't ruin the mood because she already knows that. He sits with her and smokes and when she tells him to quit, he tells her if she smokes with him, he'll quit. So, she takes a puff and now, Sam has to keep his promise and stop smoking. He takes her to a temple, where they make wishes on Tuesdays. She asks him what he'll wish for. He tells her he'll wish for her. When they come home, though, her parents are waiting for them on the balcony of their house, realizing they wouldn't have known this had happened if they hadn't come home early. Sam and Amy sit in their lounge and Amy tries to explain that they had only gone to the temple. Her father asks if they have feelings for one another and Amy shakes her head, but Sam nods. Her father puts 1500 rupees on the table and tells Sam they are his. He asks Sam what he'll do with the money. Sam says he'll pay off his loans, and the rest he'll spend tomorrow. When Amy's father asks why he'll spend the rest tomorrow, Sam says he doesn't drink on Tuesdays. Amy's father tells him that Amy's getting married, and he is a man of his word, so he cannot change his decision. So, he should leave and he'll get an invite to the wedding. Sam stands and takes the money, and when Mr. Tripati says it's his money, Sam reminds him he's a man of his words. He then proceeds to give the money to Amy, as her wedding gift. While letting himself out, he tells them he'll wait for the wedding card. Mr. Tripati is in shock at his cleverness, but doesn't say anything as Sam leaves. At night, a few days later, Sam throws Amy a note and they talk a bit over balconies. He jumps onto her balcony and asks her if she'll love him if he tops his exams. She says she will, and then goes inside when her father calls her. Sam goes to give his best exam next month. It's the guy in front of him that messes things up. He throws back a ball of paper and the invigilator sees it and asks whose it is. The boy, who looks like a high achiever, says it isn't his and blames Sam. When Sam denies, he grabs him by the collar and Sam tells him to let go, but he doesn't. Enraged at being blamed for something that isn't his fault, Sam slaps the invigilator. The next thing he knows, he ends up in jail. Amy takes all of her money and goes to the police station with Sam's father to bail him out. On the way back, when Sam's father starts to criticize him again, Amy yells at him to stop and tells him to think about why Sam is the way he is. Sam's father stops and there is a devastated expression on his face as he thinks about what Amy had said. When Sam fails his exam, Amy gets him a job. She takes her to a shareholding company and the boss there agrees to hire Sam as a busboy. Sam gets angry, thinking this job is below him. But when Amy insists, he agrees. He does the job for her. He asks her when they should celebrate, and she insists that they will celebrate when he's shown his father the employment letter. Sam thinks his father will tear the letter apart, but when he shows his father the letter, his father takes out some money he had collected in one of Sam's cricket trophies and tells his little daughter to get something sweet for them to celebrate. Sam is as shocked as his family at this. His mother tells him to hug his father, but their history won't allow them such intimacy, even if they are father and son. Amy goes to visit Sam at his job and get him to open a bank account. Sam signs the papers and thanks her for his new life. He tells her he'll buy her the same ring as the one on her hand with his first salary. Amy's expression turns sad. When Sam asks, she tells him she got engaged that morning. Heartbroken, Sam leaves the office and rips up the bank papers. That night, he comes to her place, drunk, and bangs on her door to tell her he won't quit his job. He'll keep doing it for her. She cannot open because of her parents, and Sam's mother and friends take him home. Sam is at his job the next day, when he receives a phone call that makes him run for his house. He sees the lock on Amy's door and, in a flurry of anger and panic, finds Swati to ask her where Amy and her family went. He goes to the address he had forced Swati to tell her and finds Amy and her mother on the balcony. Amy's father comes down, ready to fight him and asks Sam what it will take for him to leave his daughter alone. Sam tells him he loves her, but Mr. Tripati says she doesn't. Amy comes down to answer for herself and tells them that she does love Sam, but she loves her parents more. She tells Sam to forget everything and to not bother them again. That night, she finds him standing in the rain, with his bank papers in his hands. She agrees to meet him one last time to make him leave. The next day, she tells her mother she's going to see Sam. When her mother tells her to stop, she says she doesn't want to regret not doing this for the rest of her life. She tells her mother she's always done what her parents wanted and this time she wants to do something for herself. On this note, her mother lets her go. Together, Sam and Amy sign his bank statements, 
and Amy takes him to a friend's house she had borrowed for the day. She chose this as a place of refuge for her and Sam, where they could be with one another without judgmental eyes staring at them. Seeing this as their last chance to be together, Amy kisses him and they make love to the sound of the rain. Their bliss couldn't last. Amy tells Sam she will always love him and she will always have these memories of them together, but she has to marry Derek, for her parents and for her family. They cry in an embrace that feels like a goodbye, before they leave the house and go back to their lives. As they walk, they talk about how many kids they would have and what they would look like. Amy says she forgot to give her friend the key to the house. She says she'll be right back. Sam lets her go. Crash. Sam turns to find Amy's bloody body in the middle of the road, still conscious, her tortured eyes staring at him. He runs towards her, unthinkingly and a car crashes into him, leaving him paralyzed and unable to reach her. In the hospital as Sam's family leads him out, Derek comes forward and grabs his collar. But when he sees the dead look in Sam's eyes, he knows this will do no good. Sam sits in front of her body in the morgue. He takes the cloth off her face to find it battered on one side, her eyes peacefully closed, as though she were asleep. He covers her face again and holds her cold, lifeless hand in his, to feel her one last time before he has to let her go. In the hospital, when he is healing, he sees her time and time again, standing in a corner. But she always disappears. They all attend the funeral, and Sam leaves last, crying while they burn her ashes. As he recovers at his home, Amy's mother leaves Amy's diary there, for Sam to read. When he reads it, in his bed at night, he finds doodles of his name and hers, written together and all the letters she had written to him when she didn't have the courage to say it out loud. Years later, Sam has made himself successful in the share business. He names his company after Amy, calling it Amy Share Management. He stares at the window in his office, until she appears and he walks there to stand and talk to her. She is just as young, but he is older, she is the image he has of her in her head. Maybe it was the head injury he sustained, maybe it was a miracle. Whatever it was, Sam had found his happiness in his own way.